Hello everybody and welcome to this video. This video is going to be a little different than most videos because this video we are going to be talking about what happened this weekend when I screened, or I didn't screen it, but it was screened, um, a short I made right here. Um, to explain all of this and have you understand all of this, um, I need to go into some detail. So I belong to a group that um, does this thing where every three months, if you say you're going to make a horror short, you have three months to make it. And then you turn it in, and then within that next week, there is a screening of every one short. And if you say you're going to do it and you don't do it, then you're fined $100. If you, when you turn that money in, that money gets divided up among the people who did turn a movie in. So it's like an incentive to make sure you do it if you say you're going to do it. And then if you don't pay the $100, um, there is public shaming and you won't be able to take part in another event until you make your payment. So that is the gist of it. And so I had this short that I wanted to do with a certain actor. It's the actor is an old friend of mine. Um, I haven't worked with him in fucking years since like 2013. And I was just really excited to do this project with him. We were scheduling it and trying to figure it out and do all this shit. And um, then he got COVID kind of pushed it off a week um and then I didn't hear from him and for like another week and I started to panic because we were getting kind of close to the deadline when he finally got in touch with me he had been in the hospital um for like the last week over it and he got out and he still wasn't feeling great and so I didn't want to push it can't remember exactly how many days were left but um if i were to give him a little more time to like heal up that would only give me i think three days to shoot the movie cut the movie and um submit it so i was up all night one night and i was just sitting there and i was like what the fuck am i gonna do and i'm like okay well it's gotta be a horror short okay it's gotta be a horror short all right. Um, and then I'm like, okay, well, who's my audience? Who am I? Who who are the people who are going to be watching this? And because of the whole aspect of this and how it works out, I have a very like niche demographic who are um, filmmakers and actors. Because basically, the only people who could go. Um, to the screening or the people who worked on the films. And then um, if you do want other people to come, you have to like um, ask in advance and all this shit to make sure there's enough seats or whatever. So knowing that the majority of the audience were going to be filmmakers in this community, I was like, oh, okay. And I know how the indie horror scene is in LA. Um, it's, Everyone's really buddy buddy, but um, it could be really fucking cutthroat. Um, everybody has an opinion about everybody's work, um, and a lot of times those opinions that they have of people's work they don't share with the person; they share with everybody else. And um, it's just kind of a catty group of people. And I'm not trying to talk shit on everybody. It's just that's kind of the nature of how everybody is. And there are an amazing bunch of people in this group. So um, don't take what I'm saying here is like a dig. It's just, this is who these people are. But also being an artist, um, it is hurtful when you hear um, criticism about your work, even if it's constructive criticism. Like I've seen people, um, not necessarily the people who were there that night, but people in the community I've seen people like completely fucking melt down over somebody saying something completely 
um, not shitty to them about their work. I've had conniption fits about, um, like this one movie I made, I didn't like an edit that the producers had done to a movie and I completely lost my shit. And, um, a really good friend of mine was just like, dude, you're being a bitch. Like you're, you had a movie made, like shut the fuck up. So, um, we, we are all fragile artists. <clears throat> so that being said, and, um, knowing a little bit about, um, some current events, um, I decided to make this quick little short and, um, I got a bottle of wine and I went and sat on the edge of the bathtub in the bathroom and I talked for 27 minutes and um, then I edited a bunch of the stuff together and I'm going to show you, I'm going to premiere the YouTube premiere of a chunk of this short. The short in all is like four minutes long. Um, and I, I can't play all of it because I was informed that if I were to post this, um, my account would probably be deleted. There would be boys in blue knocking on the door um, pretty quickly here. So um, I'm gonna play <clears throat> a good portion of it um, until it gets, and then I'm going to cut it at a certain point and you'll probably know why. I feel alone in a crowded room. When I walk past a mirror, I heard all the things that you said about me that you thought were secrets. All the things that you told your friends and confidants. <laughs> I have tried so hard, so fucking hard, in these little meetups and social situations to hold everything back. And call it anxiety, call it whatever you want. But just come into these things with you people. Why give me shit about that? Crazy. <laughs> Why did you push me? <gasps> you brought all of this on yourself. Everything that happens after this is your fault. <laughs> you have no idea what you've done. <laughs> this has to be a horror show. I'm supposed to just scare you. <laughs> and I thought to myself, what would be more terrifying? Knowing that I have a captive audience. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, so I cut it there because um, after that, things get um, very serious. 
like, I just did it. And I was like, you know what? Like, it would be awesome if they decide to show it because um, it's going to scare the shit out of the people in there. But I completely understand if they decide it's too much and they don't want to do it. And when I submitted it, I fucking said, I'm like, look, you know, whatever. And um, I didn't know if I should even turn it in. And then I was talking to a friend of mine who is also a filmmaker. And um, he was just like, dude, this is so fucking punk rock. You got to fucking do it. Like, dude. And then, like, you need to, like, come out into the crowd with... um, chainsaws and all this other shit and that's the other part about it because I wanted this to be kind of a um, a little more of a performance piece if you will what I did and what ended up happening was um, as soon as the short starts I get up and leave okay so I turned the movie in and I had a talk with the guy who puts it on and I'm like you know like, what, what are you thinking about it? And he, at first he's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. Like, I'm doing this to scare the people in the room, dude. And so there were some lines that he wanted out of it. And I think, honestly, after seeing how it played out, it completely worked better without the lines in it. Um, the lines, I think, were a little bit overkill. But one of the things I was asking, I'm like, look, I'm going to leave. And... Um, when this is going on since you and a couple other people who would have been in the know are sitting in the front of the room if you guys could just kind of like look around and act a little panicked um while this is happening i think it would like really play a lot better and he's like absolutely fucking not i'm like i'm like you can do, it will show the movie, like, alleged, like, at this point, I didn't even know if it was, like, 100% they were going to show it. You could show the movie, um, and if you want to get up and leave, you know, get up and leave, but, like, um, there's not going to be any other participation things. And um, there were a couple people who knew what was happening, who were like, dude, like, you need this, you need this, and I'm like, well, like, when I was first doing it, I was thinking, you know, like firecrackers or um something like that and then um i was thinking of like getting a helium tank and having that in the back of the room and just like opening it so there would be like this in the back of the room while this is going on and then when i was hiding in the room I, like, was behind, a, like, I was behind a rack, and so, like, the people in the audience couldn't see me. I could have totally just went, and no one would have ever fucking known I was there. Um, <clears throat> but at the end of the day, you didn't need that, because the whole idea of this was, the, the short is called um, The Things We Say in Secret. Maybe I'll play the very end okay so i'm gonna keep out the um the terrifying part (laughs) and i'll put the um uh i'll I'll put the other part in right here is that scary (laughs) don't look at the person next to you all of you you. (laughs) they can't fucking help you (laughs) but don't Fucking dare turn this off. <laughs> the more astute audience members in this room will have noticed that I fucking left. <laughs> Am I doing it? <laughs> am I doing it yet? God, I fucking hope I am. Oh, the looks on your faces must be amazing. You never know. Which one of us? Stop! <laughs> okay, so that was a little bit of creative editing at the end there to um, take out things that I think would make this 
um, video in my account. Um, so that was basically the short. Um, I think I'm going to put the whole short up on my members page. Um, hopefully that will keep bad things from happening. So like I'll put it up there and if it gets taken down or flagged or whatever, then whatever, I'll take it down. But anyway, so <clears throat> you guys are probably wondering, well, what the fuck happened, you psycho? So this is what happened. I told them beforehand, I'm like, you know, like, I don't really think anyone's going to buy this. But like, even if, oh, well, let me, let me get back up because I was talking about like, there were talks about doing something like other than that. The whole idea about this is, is that these are things that some people would say in secret, not knowing anyone's around to hear them. And then there's the part where I'm like, am I doing it? Am I doing it yet? And then I'm like, God, I hope I am. Because even like the person I am portraying in this bit doesn't think, it's like a hope, but doesn't think that they have the balls to fucking do it or whatnot. And then at the very end, it's like, you never know who's going to snap. Like, you never know which one of us could fucking snap. And I think that a lot of people, especially in um, more, not affluent, but like more, uh, I don't want to use the word privileged, but I don't know another way to do it. In more privileged walks of life, um, don't think things like this can happen to them like it could happen to those people over there but not over here but the more people push somebody and if that person already has fucking issues and problems like it's fucking very likely that someone can fucking lose their shit especially in today's climate um and i mean politically and also weather wise because it's fucking hot as balls out here um, and people are crazier in the summer. So anyway, so, um, I just, I, I kept saying, I'm like, I think people will probably like, first off, I hope that they get the point of it at the end, but I don't think anybody did really. That was a bit of a failure on my part. Um, the second bit is I thought maybe people like for a half a second would go, oh, it's just like, it's just a short, we're fine, we're fine. But just like that, like even like a half a second, two or three people who saw it beforehand are like, I don't know, dude, like, I think this is pretty, like people might, yeah, you know, and then I'm like, well, shit, if one person, if at least one person runs for the door, then obviously it worked. Okay. The screening happens. Okay. I like the, um, screechy breaks right when I say that, um, I don't know how many people were there, maybe 30 people maybe a little bit more um we're in a dark room it's plain i get up and leave and there's a part where i'm just kind of talking about myself or like myself and then there's a part where like i start talking about this being a horror short and i'm supposed to just scare you so from that point it turns from oh, this was just, like, some, like, talking head confession thing, and now, like, it's, like, real in the sense that, like, all of us are here because we made a short, and all of our shorts are supposed to scare people. Um, so I went from talking about, like, mental history to um, being hurt by the people um, by some people because I heard what they were saying about me and all this other shit and all of this stuff a lot of it is stuff that I know people in that room can relate to um, just because I know the community we're in so it goes there and then when I started talking about like the shorts and all this other stuff it got kind of like oh and people were like <laughs> oh oh whoa um and i think at that point that's when people started kind of like looking around and um heads were turning a lot 
everyone was looking everyone was like doing this there were ner- there was nervous laughter um there were a couple like claps and then like i remember the part that i thought was so fucking weird is when I say um, the more astute viewers will notice that I've left the room, I'm not fucking there. That got like a huge laugh. And then the laugh like stopped because I think people laughed and then turned around and noticed that I really wasn't there. Then shit got fucking weird. And then um, there, I, I cut probably... I don't know. I maybe cut like a minute now, like maybe 45 seconds out. Um, and I, I like um, you saw the thing like I'm like, oh, they can't help you. Don't look at them, you know. Um, and apparently when I said that um, this one, I didn't see. But people told me that when I say, like, don't look at the people next to you, they can't help you. Like, apparently everyone immediately started looking at the person next to him. And then there's another thing I say. At this point, this dude jumps up, kicks over like a metal um, water bottle or something and bolts and went through the door and fucking left and never came back. Um, And I didn't know that. I thought he got up and ran to the bathroom because I couldn't see from where I was like what door he went through. So I didn't know he actually left. So I felt kind of bad about that. Then the short ended and um, going back to where I was, like where I was hiding, I went back there when it was dark. And then when the lights came on, you would think I would have an easier way getting out, but um, I couldn't get out right away because I went this way and it was a dead end. That was embarrassing. But so they're like, because after your short, you do like a quick little Q&A. And they're like, okay, Matt, come on up. And um, I, I wasn't there. And everyone's like, what the fuck? <laughs> so it took me a minute. And then when I finally popped out, I think I startled the people who were sitting like right there in the back. Um, but it was really weird because I went up and started talking about it real quick. And it's basically the stuff I told you guys. And um, I was looking in the audience because there were people who... Um, and again, this is probably some shitty prejudice shit, but there were some people who I assumed would be like livid with this short. And, um, I looked out at those people, like I wanted to see if they were like going to give me like the evils or if they enjoyed it. And, um, they really dug it. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I had no idea. Like, I really thought that this was going to happen. And then they were going to say that I triggered them and shit was going to get fucked up. Um, But I was completely fucking wrong. Like, about that, at least. Well, I still didn't know exactly how it went. Now, here is part two of why this night was awkward. I, um had food poisoning i ate the night before at a goddamn taco truck that was making birria tacos and um that did not do well in my body and i thought the whole time that i was sweating like a pig and was cold and clammy and pale fucking white because i was nervous about the short nope it turns out i was like basically dying So, um, I went up there and I'm like pouring sweat like a stuffed fucking pig. And I'm like, yeah, I'm an artist. Blah, 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 blah. And, um, but like afterwards, some people came up and talked to me about it and, um, said that it was really fucking scary. And it was like the first time like that they've ever been scared at a movie theater before or at a screening or whatever. Um, Somebody wrote me and said um, it was the first time that they ever were watching a movie where, like, suddenly they didn't know if they were watching a movie anymore. Like, all that shit, like, kind of... And again, like, I don't think this is the best way to make a movie. I don't think... This was, like, um, necessity's the mother of invention. I didn't want to pay the hundred bucks. 
I didn't have enough time to actually make something. So I'm like, okay, I'll do this because this will scare this room of people. And honestly, it probably would have scared any room of people. But what I was saying in it was directed towards the people who were in that room. And I think that's why it worked so good. Um, but yeah, so, um, and the stuff that um, they asked me to cut, I think was brilliant. Like, less is more, guys. Like, and this is just horror 101, and people still don't fucking understand this. The less, and uh, me and my friend got into an argument about this the other day. The less you see of the monster or the creature or the baddie, the better. Um, when, when you're making a horror film, typically, with very few exceptions, but typically the audience is living vicariously through the victim of a movie, okay? And that's why the 80s... Well, mainly the 70s is where it started, but it didn't reach popularity until the 80s. And that is when um, the audience started living vicariously through the killer, the slasher. And that's why a lot of people got pissed because, like, you would go to a movie theater and Jason would come out and kill somebody and the audience would cheer. And that's, like, that's weird. <clears throat> but if you're working with suspense... The less you see of something, the better. Especially if your monster looks like shit. Especially if your creature or whatever looks awful. When we as audience members don't know what's going to happen next, <clears throat> we start very rapidly guessing, putting things together in our head, trying to prepare ourselves for what might come next just so we're not too fucking scared. So nine times out of 10, that audience member is going to be able to come up with something way more fucked up than you can ever come up with as a filmmaker. So the less you fucking show of anything, the better. Um, I have fucked this up a hundred times. Every fucking filmmaker out there has fucked this up a million times. Um, and we were talking about Leviathan, um, a crappy looking monster made by Stan Winston who um, doesn't usually make crappy looking monsters and that one wasn't great that is what happened and um, I don't really know if the people got any heat um, from the screening I'm sure there was at least one person who was very terrified and pissed off um, so I don't know, like, uh, you shouldn't do it, but, um, it was an experiment and, um, I guess it was successful. So let me know down below what you think and, um, make sure you click the join button so you could hopefully see this in its entirety and, um, all that other fun stuff, including the Poetic Anarchy course, which is starting in July. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.